Well, hello everyone. It's a beautiful day. It's always a beautiful day. It just depends how you look at it. But, well, I thought I'd do a quick live video. I have work to do. Um, long and short of it is, as I finished up on a big project, I'm trying to get myself together for the next project, get that lined up. And, you know, I'm not sure how long it'll take to get lined up, so I'm a little nervous. But in the meantime, I have my own project to do. And, well, I don't feel like doing it. The death of my little Tony is a problem. Can't stop but think about him. But, uh, well, more importantly, I'm sitting down and kind of evaluating what, what I've got, what my goals are. And, well, see, I want to talk about change, about the nature of change in this world in a way that people can understand it. And I've got some really great stories to, to put together in a, in a framework that has something for the head and the heart and the guts and some really good stuff. But you know what, the goal, the goal that I have in mind is that I really think that we don't have the language to begin to debate what is the change that's actually happening in the world. And a conversation with my son and my mom and other people as well, but uh, uh, they're the ones I take as my, my primary advisors in all this, and, and Raquel too, uh, can't forget that. Um, well, it's really clear that the world is changing so rapidly that we don't have the language to even describe what we're talking about. So when you want to talk about a politics, okay, there is a politics of the next world. But we don't have the ability to operate in that zone at this point. I could tell you a left-wing perspective, I could, you know, whatever, um, define a left-wing, a new, a new a solution for everything. But I think it's much more important to set up things in a way that, that begs discussion in a way that's productive, that we can talk about stuff together. And yeah, I've got the great, I've got stories, I've got ways of looking at it, I've got, you know, head and heart and all that, all lined up. But what about that language? What about the throat? The throat chakra? It's much more difficult. And perhaps that's just going to have to come. But the basic theory is this, and this, some of this comes from talking to my 19-year-old son, Everybody who is younger understands that the world is changing so rapidly that they simply cannot make long-term plans. Something like going to college, getting a degree, which sets you up for life, you know, this is your career and you follow along, is just ridiculous. It doesn't make any sense to them. Many are opting to not go to college and pick up that debt. It's reasonable. But, but the, the basic concept that the world that is developing around us and is coming is going to be so different so dynamic, so out of this world, we, we don't have the ability to understand it yet, you have to remain flexible. And there are three ways of looking at this if you're a young person today. And I've always talked about two, but there really is a third. The first is, you just sort of go with the flow. A lot of young people uh, in their 20s, 30s, whatever, just you know, they accept the fact that they have to go along and take advantage of every opportunity that's in front of them and just move quickly. This makes it very difficult to have a family, buy a house, uh, all those kinds of things. Um, houses are so expensive anyways. Uh, you, you need to be flexible. You need to be ready to go. So all of the things that are considered the foundation of basic American society are, you know, just not, not a, a viable option. They only tie you down. The second way of looking at a world like this is what? Paralysis. Do nothing. I can't possibly imagine what to do about it. Can't I just get like some job somewhere and just leave me alone? Let me just deal with it. All right. Uh, take advantage of opportunities. You know, screw that. Uh, I'm just going to have to accept a somewhat lower standard of living, whatever. I don't want to deal with this crap. The third response is one of anger. I mean, I can't even make plans. Who, who did this to us? Who do we blame? Who do we take it out on? And this is important, I think, in understanding things like the El Paso shooter. 
Um, people have said that this person is mentally ill. I think that's a grievous insult to mentally ill people. And more importantly, it says that this person is an other. It separates them out. Well, he has mental illness. That was his problem. He's not like us. He's different. Actually, no. He's like an awful lot of young people these days. And he was extremely rational. Yes, I'm going to say it. In his planning of taking out what he thought were the, the enemies of, you know, the people who were somehow making it impossible for him to organize his own life, one way or the other. They, the people that made it impossible for him to have control, or an appropriate level of control over his own life, okay? Now, everybody has different needs for different levels of control in their life. If you are truly flexible and you accept that, then you become, as I said, it's very difficult to, to be a part of these bedrock concepts in American life, home ownership, marriage, children, all of these kinds of things. If you're in the middle group, you just don't know what to do. Just, just leave me alone, okay? If you're in the far group, you insist on more control, okay? You, you, you have to have control, and you're susceptible to blaming those who you think are responsible for it. And, and who do you blame? I mean, you blame immigrants, you blame those immoral people who are, you know, trying to destroy us all. Um, I, I've posted a few videos about that. A really neat, neat one just went up from uh, the excellent Shannon Q uh, ab about about the right wing response. You know, how to how to blame people and and um, set people up to be defensive, to to feel that they are under attack um, simply by people who are have the audacity to, to demonstrate that they are different and live their lives in a different way. So. I have three different views of this, but there's really a spectrum depending on how much control you personally want in your life and how you respond to this world which really does not allow control um, in, in your world. And, well, I guess what I'm saying is, is that I'm developing some of this language, but I don't feel it's quite adequate yet. Now, I do have... Like I said, some really good stories, uh, and I've talked about them before. Uh, Edgar Codd, uh, W. Edwards Deming, and uh, Malcolm McLean. If you don't know either of those guys, that's, that's kind of my point. i got to tell their stories within a framework. And yeah, they're all white men, and yeah, they were all doing their thing really um, between 1945 and 1970. Okay. Um, Seems like ancient history. Seems like a time long ago. Yeah, but it points to something. They were people who, in many ways, well, they created the world we live in, for better or worse. And they have attitudes that I think um, are instructive. Um, ways of looking at the world. But it doesn't give us this language to really confront what I think is the key issue. Now, if you're not a pale male like me, you say, control over your life? <laughs> what, what kind of white privilege is that? That you, you expect to have control over your own life, you know? Um, yeah, 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 we do. And, and that's something that, that everybody should have. And, and it's true that a lot of women, uh, a lot of people who don't look like me, um, a lot of people who are different than me, that are, that are not, you know, heterosexual and cis and all that other stuff, gave up on the idea of having control a long time ago. But, you know, that's not good enough for everybody. And it shouldn't be. Right? Can you really forge your own destiny? I mean, if you can't, how can you call yourselves a free people? That's sort of the basis of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, right? You don't have the ability to, to pursue happiness. What is the point? So at some point, it, it turns into this, this, it's all about ability to control your life and how you respond to the perceived inability to control your life. Again, people who don't look like me, many of them long ago, gave up on that concept as a fantasy. It's kind of a definition of white privilege that you would, that you would even talk about this, right? 
And, you know, I'm a middle-aged pale male. Let me talk about it. <clears throat> All right. Um, but that is what we're talking about, really. The ability of people to understand, respond, participate in the world around them. And we can talk about all kinds of high flute and fancy ideas like, you know, democracy, where people are connected and, uh, you know, participate in their system and run their system or whatever. Man, there are so many things that have to go before that. I mean, they have to believe it's rational to do that, that it's going to make any difference. They have to believe in themselves, that they have something to add. They have to uh, spend some time being constructive and really thinking through all of it. Wow. You know, um, a lot of people, for various reasons, give up at stage one. What's the point? You know? It's not going to make any difference anyway. Um, you know? And if you can barely control your own life and, and can't really envision your own future, I mean, seriously, where's there to start? And, yeah, a lot of people who don't look like me or um, love like me or think like me or have the same plumbing I do and same chromosomes gave up on that idea a long time ago. Well, what does it mean to be a free and open democratic society in a world like that? I mean... The, the long and short of it is is that many people all around the world are looking for somebody to just tell them what to do. You know, authoritarianism is a rational response. I mean, can't somebody just organize this and make it all work? Right? Life is easier if somebody just tells you what to do. And if you have no idea what to do, okay. <laughs> um... This is what I'm trying to counter. And I've kind of gone down my own rabbit hole. I'm, I'm very proud of the stories I have and the way I need to assemble it. But when I sat down to write and really get together the stories of these three gentlemen and what I think they represent and what they, what they learned in the process of taking their very, very good ideas and reducing them to practice um, are very illustrative. But it doesn't get to the personal heart of it. And I guess I really wound up talking about two things. Um, the, the feelings of what you need, and then the, the voice to express them appropriately. There's at least two things there, probably many, many more. And you can keep this discussion really heavily in the head, but at some point it goes down to the heart, and really, ultimately, it's in the belly. Feed the belly. How are we going to survive this, you know? Um, it's difficult to put all this together. And what I want to do is to not, you know, be the authoritarian, pale male, I have the knowledge. I will dispense the knowledge to you. No, no the goal is to have uh, frameworks, iconography, and language, all of those kinds of things that people can start having the appropriate discussions and formulate their own uh, desires, their needs, in a way which is constructive, that allows people to work together and uh, understand real genuine divisions that are naturally going to occur. I mean, in this world that's coming up, there will be a politics. There will be at least a left and a right and for a time, there will be many, many, many different views. The idea that it might crystallize into just two opposing camps is probably a very long way away. There will be a politics, and there will be people who say things that I don't agree with, but have a very good point. Uh, many of them will have life experiences different from middle-aged pale male. Um, and it will be based, ideally, on their needs. Their search for, what, the ability to determine their own life as a free people. Whatever control that they need. Not controlling others, but controlling their own life enough to be happy. Or, well, even if their goal isn't to be happy, let's just say, whatever they need. So, I think I'm getting there. 
But encouraging that debate, finding that language, is still so elusive. I think I can describe a perspective. I think I can start a way of looking at it, but man, um, we got the head and the heart. I'm working on the throat and the stomach, and I don't know. It's a lot. It's the big ball of wax. Can I possibly solve all the problems of the world? No. I just hope to have a way of talking about them. And to be honest with you, I do think that that's what somebody about my age has to contribute at this point. The, the world is something that the people in their 30s and younger, really in their 20s and younger, are going to create. And it's up to them to find a way to do it. Um, the ones that just kind of go with the flow are going to come up with some pretty good answers. No, no doubt about that. It's kind of tactical, not strategic. So that, there's still a problem there. Those who are um, paralyzed, well, I don't know that they'll be paralyzed forever. I hope not. As it stands, they're, they're just going to be looking out for themselves. Those who are full of hate, you know, uh, there's, a, there's a temptation to want to just stomp them out, to, to say that they're, they're an other, they have mental illness, they're one of those, they're just Nazis. Shouldn't we just punch Nazis? There's a temptation to do that. We have to stop their ability to recruit more. And, and maybe, maybe we do at some point need to isolate the, the infection. I'd really hate to give up on anybody. I mean, sometimes those people that are full of hate, they are full of hate because they do have some drive within them that's being frustrated. If we can take away that frustration, maybe we can channel that energy into something else. I don't know. It might be difficult. It might be impossible. What is my point? I'm trying to figure out what my useful position could be in this world. I've I've got a few things. I really should just sit down and just pound it out and see where it goes. But I know I'm missing something very important. And uh, well, that's where I'm at. And I'd love everybody's sort of opinion on it. But what it basically comes down to is, is that uh, those who are looking forward to a long life ahead of them know that Nothing is guaranteed. And it's the reaction to that that determines what they do. But that's the fundamental core assumption, I think, for everybody who's young. And I see a lot of despair and expressions of despair. That's not good. Very difficult to organize people very difficult to make something good, useful happen. And one of the characteristics of this time is that everything is more integrated and close than ever before. So this instinct to separate is particularly destructive. We do need to stand together, make things work, I'm trying to figure out how we can at least talk to each other. Without that, I don't know how we get anywhere. I mean, we see it now in the left and the right. Uh, very, very different language being used. Very deliberately, language is foisted on people. Um, in the right wing, for example, all that defensive language that we're under attack. Again, the video I shared from Shannon, spot on. Um... You need to hunker down and defend everything you believe in because it's under attack from those outsiders. That's a natural response, and it's easily exploited by demagogues, and we're going to see that more and more. A lot of different responses. So anyway, whatever you might have to uh, how you see this, what I'm talking about. I mean, I just being crazy. That's, you know, valid viewpoint. I know I'm being a bit crazy for sure. What you think about 
how we look at the future of the world. I can describe something about where the world is going based on the stories I have together. It's at best a start. Um, working title is still Delta. Um, three sections, three chapters each. I like a lot of threes. Um, but it just feels so inadequate. And yeah, my, my brain's a little bit roasted from grief of my friend of 15 years passing, so. One of the smartest people I ever knew. <laughs> he was a cat, okay. <laughs> um, anyways, I love you all, and... Well, basically, I could use a little guidance as to how I can be useful. How what I'm talking about, thinking about, might might uh, make sense for the rest of the world. So, just let me know. Tell me what you're thinking. And, uh, you know, here, here's the thing. These little Facebook bits, what would be really cool is if some of you just went live and just started talking like I do and gave me something to respond to. I would really love that. You know, uh, so do that and put a link down here and just, you know, this is what I was thinking about today. Um, that would be so cool. Might be an easier way to have the discussion. So, all right, I'm going to go and try and get a little work done and push some of this together. But it all feels pretty inadequate. I guess one step at a time, right? The journey of 10,000 Li begins with the first step. No, Mao didn't say it. Kung Tzu said it. Confucius. Uh, we'll get all Chinese on you again. And yeah, tying the world together, that's just another, another story out there, another thing to worry about. We're working on it. All right. I'll see everybody.